So maybe you've started experiencing some new floaters in your vision, maybe like some cobwebs or a line or even a ring in your vision, and maybe you're even seeing some flashes of light. These things could be due to a vitreous detachment. We're gonna talk about what that is in this video, what it means for your eye, and everything that you need to know about it. Hang around. What is up, Zach here with Dr. Eyeball MD, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm a third year ophthalmology resident, and in this video today, I'm gonna go over what a vitreous detachment is. This will be geared a little more toward the basic level, so people with no ophthalmology experience. So if you're an ophthalmologist, it's gonna be a little more basic than you probably uh, care to hear, so go click on one of my other videos. But if you are wanting the basics of what a vitreous detachment means for your eye, uh, and maybe you've just started experiencing some new floaters or lines or cobwebs in your vision, or even some flashes of light, and you're wondering what the heck is going on, we're gonna go over one of the things that could be causing those symptoms, uh, and that is a vitreous detachment. We're gonna be talking about it in this video. So to understand what a vitreous detachment is, let's first describe what vitreous is. The easiest way to think about it is to think of it as the gel that makes up kind of the meat inside of the eye. It's the gel that fills the eye. So if this is your eye, this cross section of the eye, little model, there's a gel that fills the center of the eye and it's kind of got the consistency of jello basically, maybe a little more liquid. And as we get older, it gets more and more liquidy. So it maybe starts more jello consistency, you know, when we're born and in our early years. But as we get older, it liquefies and liquefies and becomes more liquidy. Uh, until the point that we eventually develop a vitreous detachment from that. What does that mean though? So if you think of this eye as being filled with that jelly and kind of plastered up against the inside back wall of the eye, and this orange part is gonna be the retina. So that's the inside back wall of the eye, uh, the retina, which is responsible for seeing. And that jelly is actually kind of stuck up against that when we're younger. As we get older, the jelly kind of starts to liquefy, and when it does that, it shrinks, so it starts pulling away from the inside back wall of the eye or the retina, so it starts pulling away from it. And what can happen is, on the wall of that jelly that's pulled away from the retina, you can actually get a hole in what's called the cortical vitreous, or the outer kind of layer of the vitreous, or the la outer layer of that gel can get a little hole, and then that more liquefied gel in the center part can kind of seep through the hole and start to cause what's called a vitreous detachment. So a vitreous detachment is not a retinal detachment. A retinal detachment is when the actual retina is being detached from the inside back wall of the eye. That is not good, that is never normal. But a vitreous detachment, meaning the gel is just attaching from the inside back wall of the eye, happens to everybody. By the time we're 70 or 80 years old, it's pretty much happened to most people, and it typically occurs in people in their 60s or 70s. It can occur earlier if you are nearsighted, so if you have to put on glasses to see far away, then you are probably nearsighted, and it can occur earlier in those cases. So, what does it mean for the eye? So that gel is pulling away, it is basically coming apart from the retina, but there are certain places where it's more sticky. Uh, so it normally will start pulling apart from the retina at the very center of the macula around the fovea, which is kind of the very central part of your central vision. So the very center part, if you're looking at something, you are looking with your fovea. So that's your crystal clear 20-20 vision. That gel tends to pull away from the retina right around there first. You typically don't notice it. But as that gel continues to pull away from the inside back wall of the eye, when it gets to the nerve, the optic nerve, which is basically the nerve that just runs from your brain to your eye, because we need a way to get information from the eye to the brain, that's the nerve. When that gel starts to detach and it gets to that nerve, the gel is very, very strongly adherent around the edge of the nerve, so around kind of that circular nerve as it enters the back of the eye. The gel is very adherent around there, and when it pulls off, it actually stays attached around the edge of the nerve, and so you're left with a ring. And so you may be experiencing like a new floater in your vision kind of centrally, and it may even look ring-shaped, and that is probably what is going on. And there are a lot of things that can cause floaters. There are much worse eye pathologies that can lead to floaters. Uh, we can talk about that in a later video, but this is one of the most common reasons for you to have a new floater is that 
little ring of, of kind of in the back of the gel. And it's called a Weiss ring and you can see it because when light comes in and it falls on that little ring of gel, it casts a shadow on the retina and you perceive that as a floater. So that's probably one of the reasons that you may be seeing a floater there. Those wavy lines, like a, a line in the vision, like a spider web or cobweb, that you probably see more prominently if you look at like a, a white wall or the sky. And it, you'll notice if you move your eyes, it tends to kind of jump uh, with the movement of your eyes. If you are noticing that, you're noticing some strands of the condensed gel. The collagen fibrils of that gel can kind of condense and form a floater. And so you're actually seeing that gel kind of dancing around in your eye. That's why it looks like it's moving. So when does this become an issue? The issue is when that gel does not separate easily from the inside back wall of the eye. Now, like I said, there's a few places that it's strongly adherent. One is around the nerve. One is where there are blood vessels. One is also at the very edge. So out here in the edge of the vitreous, called the vitreous base, it's very strongly adherent and basically never detaches from there. But sometimes it may be focally adherent to the retina, meaning that gel is actually stuck to the retina so much so that when it tries to pull away from the retina, instead of making a clean kind of separation, which would be normal, it actually takes a small little piece of retina with it. And when it does that, it can kind of tint up the retina and cause a tear in the retina, like a flap tear or a hole. The easiest way to think about this is to think of the retina like wallpaper and think of the room that you're in like the inside of the eye. Imagine it was filled with fluid and if I went back and I did a small little tear in the wallpaper and this room was filled with fluid, eventually some of that fluid would seep under that tear in the wallpaper and it could peel the wallpaper off. That's basically what happens with the retinal detachment. The way that you might perceive that is like a curtain coming across the vision. So when the retina starts detaching, it typically will do it s slowly somewhat as the fluid kind of peels the retina off the back inside wall of the eye. And the way you perceive that is kind of a sectoral curtain, like a dark kind of shade coming across the eye. It can be kind of blackish or greenish purple, kind of just like a dim curtain. And it can come from any direction and it's gonna be opposite where the tear is happening. So if the tear is happening up here, you'll notice like a curtain coming across the vision this way. That is kind of the worst possibility of what can happen when that vitreous is detaching. Another thing that can happen with it is you might see like flashing lights. What the flashing lights are is when that gel is trying to pull away from the retina, again, remember that's normal with aging, that happens to everybody. If it's strongly focally adherent, it will tug on the retina. And the way the retina perceives that tugging is with light flashes or photopsias. So you may be experiencing some flashes of light kind of in like a, a straight up and down vertical pattern. Uh, and they may be occurring kind of out on the outside edges of one of your eyes and it may kind of shoot like a little lightning flash. That's probably that gel starting to tug on the retina. That's a good reason for your ophthalmologist to take a look inside the eye so that they can see if that's what's going on. Is that the reason that you're having these flashes of light or that you're having a new floater? So it's a good idea to go see your ophthalmologist if you start experiencing uh, these symptoms so that they can look for that. What they are gonna do is they're gonna dilate your eyes, meaning making the pupil big, this part, so that they can see into the back of the eye and actually see the retina. What are they looking for? Well, they're basically looking to see if that gel is detaching. And the way they can see that is to see if that little ring that we talked about isn't sitting out in front of the nerve. So a Weiss ring would be suggestive that your gel inside your eye, your vitreous, is detaching. But the other important thing that they're gonna do is that they're gonna look out in the very edges of your retina, so all the way out here, to make sure that that gel has not pulled a piece of retina with it and caused a tear. Because if it has caused a tear, then you're probably going to need to have laser. Um, assuming that it hasn't collected any fluid under it already, we can put a little barricade of laser that kind of spot welds the retina down around that little tear and prevents that fluid from peeling it off. So that's kind of the goal and it's called laser retinopexy. Uh, you may have had this before if a doctor did laser in your eye for a tear in the retina, that may have been what it was. Uh, but that's kind of what your doctor's looking for. So it's good to get in and see your ophthalmologist, you know, either that day or the next day. I wouldn't wait too long. You wanna make sure you don't have any tears. Um, it's not always something that has to be seen right away in the ER, but it's good to be seen, you know, within the next day or so. Um, typically your ophthalmologist is gonna wanna see you again 
assuming everything on the exam looked normal and you didn't have any tears, they're probably gonna wanna look again in the next couple weeks to a month to make sure that any tears don't develop because that gel, as it separates from the back, it doesn't always happen in one go. It tends to happen gradually. So it may detach here and then it may continue to progress until it's kind of detached from everywhere. So just because you don't have a tear on that first exam doesn't mean that you won't develop one in the coming weeks. So it's important to have a follow-up dilated eye exam uh, by your ophthalmologist. And typically they will look out in the edges when they do that exam, something called scleral depression. So if you had your eye doctor look after you had a new floater or some flashes and they were pushing on your eye and it was really painful uh, and uncomfortable, that was probably what they were doing. And just know that it's very important that they actually do that, so to let them do that. One other possibility that you sometimes will experience with this vitreous detachment, if it pulls off the retina in an area, if it's very focally adherent and it pulls and makes a little flap tear, sometimes it will do that in a place where there's a blood vessel and it can actually rip the blood vessel and that tends to just cause it to bleed inside the eye and kind of fill the eye up with blood like a snow globe. And so if that's the case, um, you know, so if you're, what you would experience basically is a bunch of new floaters. So not just one single new floater, it would be like a bunch of new floaters, like a little snowstorm of floaters is how you would kind of perceive in your vision that bleeding. Um, and then also, you know, it can be bad enough so that you can't actually see, like you can maybe count my fingers or something if there's enough blood. Uh, and typically what your ophthalmologist will do is if they can't see because there's been bleeding from a little tear from that gel pulling, uh, they'll look the best they can. They will probably ultrasound the eye, just put a little ultrasound probe on it. Make sure that retina doesn't look like it's detaching anywhere. And then they can sometimes actually find a little flap tear on an ultrasound. Um, but typically they'll have you do kind of resting, not lifting anything, sleeping propped up to let that blood kind of settle out of the way so that they can get a good view and your body will just resorb that blood like a bruise, kind of like your body resorbs a bruise. It'll re resorb the blood in your eye in a similar way. If it doesn't, then you may have to have surgery to have that blood removed. But that is basically what is going on if you were ever told that by your doctor that you had a vitreous detachment. Vitreous is just gel and it detaches from the back wall of the eye, which is the retina. It's normal in everybody. Sometimes people perceive it more. They may see that central ring type floater from the Weiss ring where the gel came off around the nerve like we talked about. Or sometimes they may perceive little flashes of light from that gel tugging on the edge of the retina. Occasionally they'll have a ton of floaters because it ripped a little blood vessel as it pulled a piece of retina off. That's not what typically happens, but it can happen. Uh, and so if those things do happen, you definitely need to be followed pretty closely by the ophthalmologist, potentially treated with laser if you did have a tear. Um, but those are kind of the things to watch out for. So if you're experiencing those types of symptoms, uh, typically we like to get patients in. So if, you know, if I have a new patient that's having new floaters, I typically will try to see them that day or, you know, next day if possible, um, especially with new flashing lights too, because we want to make sure they don't have a tear. Um, but that is basically what a vitreous detachment is. I hope that makes sense. If it does, let me know down in the comments if you've had this, what you experienced. Um, and hopefully that just kind of keys you in on what you might be experiencing. If you're having new floaters, having new flash, seeing these cobwebs, uh, and those are kind of new things for you. Um, and kind of just give you an idea of what to know about it basically. Uh, and that you should see your ophthalmologist. I hope this was informative. I hope you guys liked this video. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. If you like this video, leave a like on it down below, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.